I don't know how many of you are familiar with Sean Foyt, but if you've never heard of him, this is a popular pro-Trump preacher, a Christian musician, and Turning Point USA contributor who also recently gained a lot of attention after rumors about him and Lauren Boebert having an affair went viral. Although, to be fair to him, he does vehemently deny these allegations and even threaten the person who made them with a defamation suit. But I do find it a little bit interesting that he considers the affair rumors defamatory, but is seemingly fine with the white nationalist allegation. A little bit sus if you ask me, but I mean, that's besides the point. Sean Foyt is somebody who has made a name for himself as a right-wing puritanical who denounces degeneracy to his 100,000 followers on Twitter, which he, of course, pays for. Now, he recently took aim at a fellow Christian musician named Derek Webb, who was praised by the lead singer of a Dove Award-winning band called Plum for doing a show with a Christian drag queen named Flamey Grant. Now, he tweeted out, if you're wondering the end goal of the deconstruction movement in the church, then look no further than former worship leader Derek Webb's new collab with the drag queen. These are truly the last days. Okay, calm down a little bit, Sean. Now, before we address his hyperbolic tantrum, I've got to give props to Flamey Grant for having the most creative drag name in the history of drag queens, because for those of you who don't know, Amy Grant is one of the most popular contemporary Christian musicians ever, so I'm assuming that that drag persona is based off of her, and you love to see it. But back to Sean, because he is denouncing the deconstruction movement within the church, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with that, it's basically Christians who are trying to push for more inclusivity and update the church's teaching so that way they don't drive people out and they attract newer generations since younger people don't want to be associated with religiosity and in particular evangelicism, which, I mean, who could blame them? Now, according to Sean, collaborating with a drag queen for a Christian song isn't just unacceptable, but it represents a sign of the end times. Yeah. A little bit melodramatic there, Sean. But Flamey Grant decided to respond with a little bit of wholesome trolling, saying, end goal, baby, we're just getting started. Sean then responded, saying, well, good for us. Hardly anyone listens or cares what you do. Bad for you is that one day you'll sit before Jesus and give an account for the perversion you tried to force on kids. There's a verse about a millstone to warn you. Now, Derek Webb, who again collaborated with Flamey, jumped in to thank him for the free publicity, saying, I mean, and yet, here you are talking about it, which I deeply appreciate. Keep up the good work. Now, Sean responded again with more deceitful, sanctimonious bullshit, writing, there's that one verse about the millstone you may want to refresh your Bible memory on. It's applicable in this situation when you seek to pervert the innocence of children, at least worth a look. Now, Flamey Grant responded to that saying, baby, my only millstone is this drag jewelry I wear while I walk around the room collecting tips. That stuff is heavy. Love it. Now, there's a little bit more to their back and forth with Sean getting ratioed each time despite having 50 times the followers of Flamey Grant, but I mean, you get the point. I do want to go to a TikTok that Flamey Grant decided to post because they are going to capitalize on this unique opportunity offered by this shit-brained MAGA chud. And here's what they said. Hey, TikTok, I am Flamey Grant. That's me. I am the shame-slaying, hip-swaying, singing, songwriting drag queen who spent 22 years as a worship leader before I started doing drag. And today, Sean Foyt tried to drag me on Twitter. Of course, I am a drag queen, so I'm not going to just roll over when someone comes for me on Twitter, right? So I said, end goal, baby, we're just getting started. To which Sean replied, well, good for us. Hardly anyone listens or cares what you do. <laughs> Hurtful. To be fair, all of this happened on Twitter, which is my least favorite social media network. I don't put a lot of effort into it, so I've only got 600 followers over there. But Sean does not know about the 77,000 of you who follow me here on TikTok, which got me thinking, what if more people did know that there was a worship song written by a drag queen? good day on my album last year and it does not have as many streams as a lot of my other music and that's on me because I made it the last song on the record. <laughs> but here's the thing, I love this song, I believe in this song, I wrote it for my super awesome, inclusive, progressive, affirming church and we have sung it on many a Sunday morning. I even got my aforementioned friend Derek Webb to sing on the track with me and y'all it is a banger. It's an uplifting anthem for anyone who's felt excluded by the church, especially queer people because those are my folks, but anyone who's felt like there just wasn't a place for them to worship at church. I put it last because I wanted people to feel empowered when they finish listening to my record and I still want that. So all of this has got me thinking, what if we could get a worship song written by a drag queen to chart on the Christian charts on iTunes?
I know that sounds wild, but I was inspired by my friend Semler, who is an out Christian artist, and their song Faith just went to number one on the iTunes Christian charts earlier this year. They did it with a very enthusiastic fan base, which admittedly is like three times as big as mine, but that's all right. I'm not trying to get to number one. I just want to crack the charts. I just want to see a drag queen on the Christian charts on iTunes. So that's why I'm here. I am here to ask you to go find my album Bible Belt Baby by Flamey Grant and go stream track number 10, Good Day. You can find that album really easily by going to my profile and you know what to do from there. Stream it, add it to a TikTok video. It's in the database here. Add it to videos you make on other social media platforms. If you've got 99 cents to throw at it so you can download it digitally, do that. Look, I know it is a long shot, but I personally am tired of Christian music being dominated by guys like Sean Foyt. I think it's time for girls like us to have a shot at cracking the charts so that people who love Christian music but don't wanna be in bed with MAGA have an option. And yes, I would like to show Sean that the people he thinks are hardly anyone are actually a pretty powerful group. And guess what? Mission accomplished. Because Flamey's fans got that song onto the Christian charts. But, as Rolling Stone reports, they not only achieved that, but on July 27th, Good Day and Bible Belt Baby both hit number one on the Christian songs and album charts, respectively. Bible Belt Baby even rose as high as number 48 on Apple's album chart for all genres last Thursday. In other words, thank you, Sean, for the success of this LGBTQ plus Christian artist. I mean... This is something that I don't think he anticipated, but I mean, he's he's learning the hard way about the Streisand effect now, for sure. Now, when Rolling Stone reached out to him for comment about this story, presumably to, uh, I guess, ask him how he feels knowing that he inadvertently catapulted a Christian drag queen musician to mainstream success, his response was crickets, because I mean, why would he respond? This is incredibly embarrassing for him, and it makes him look stupid because he thought that he could bully and harass this person because he has a bigger following but the opposite happened he actually made her legitimately successful now here's what matthew blake who is the person who plays flamey said in response to their wild success quote i interact with trolls and negative people all the time online but never somebody who has 100,000 followers and is known for being aggressive with some of his stances says flamey whose offstage name is matthew blake and uses they them pronouns i definitely had a moment of pause where i was like okay queer people are legitimately under attack physically our bodies are under attack in this country there are fights breaking out outside of drag shows but at the same time it was just too good because his point was no one cares no one listens to you you're a non-entity you're not going to make an impact and just knowing what i know about the queer community and allies i rolled the dice and placed my bet on that being dramatically wrong and i think i won yeah absolutely correct about that. Now, Derek Webb also chimed in, adding, quote, I bet there were a lot of Christian music industry executives who woke up on Thursday morning and were demanding answers to how in the world a drag queen was at the top of their chart, how in the world a drag queen boxed out their artists who they've been spending tens of thousands of dollars on marketing on out of the top spot. Absolutely. I mean, I would love to see the looks on their faces. I mean, this is amazing, right? You love to see it. Now, I've got to address Sean saying that hardly uh, anyone listens or cares because we all know that that's cope, right? Because you wouldn't have thrown a fucking conniption fit in the first place about this drag queen artist if you didn't think that they would be able to make an impact. So that's total cope. But I do want to show you one more clip from a TikTok that Matthew posted because they echoed what Derek Webb told the Rolling Stone. And their response is very, very wholesome. And they also provide us with an update. So this is seven days after they went number one. So uh, keep that in mind, and here's what they have to say. There we are, still sitting pretty at the top of the charts. <sighs> Very pretty, I might add. It has been one full week of a drag queen with an explicit rating, by the way, <laughs> on her record, sitting at the top of the Christian iTunes charts. Social media has blown up around this. Everyone's losing their minds. Some in a good way, most in a good way, uh, but a handful are losing their minds in the, oh my God, how did this happen to our genre way? To which I have a really easy answer. It's not your genre, babe. It's not your genre. Queer Christians exist, honey. You made us, you raised us. We grew up in your churches and some of us decided to stick around. Look, this is a really cool thing for me as an artist and musician. I'm not going to lie. This is what we all hope happens. But the really cool thing is knowing that kids who are still growing up in those evangelical, fundamentalist, high demand religious spaces have an option to look at that none of us had growing up, right? We've been gate kept out of Christian music for so long. Y'all did that. Y'all made visibility and representation matter. Thank you. Love it. 
absolutely love it. And I've got to say, I've never heard of Flamey Grant, but thanks to Sean Foyt, I'm now a fan. So thank you, Sean. Unironically, thank you. Now, they also stated in that TikTok that uh, they've had a lot of people reach out in solidarity, people from other religions, Muslims, Jewish people. Uh, but conspicuously, one group in particular did not reach out. Can you guess which group? Evangelicals. As a former evangelical myself, this is completely unsurprising. But the point that they made about Christians raising queer people was so poignant to me. Because you don't get to call what they're doing infiltration into your genre and your religion when you are the ones who shove this religion down our throats at a very young age. I mean, I was raised in the church and it made me absolutely miserable. I hated myself and I didn't stick around, but I am glad to know that the ones who did decide to stay are doing so on their terms and not the terms of the bigots like Sean Foy. But I mean, in conclusion, this was a really feel good story that I had to share with you all because usually LGBTQ plus stories are very, very depressing as of late. So I wanted to give you one where, again, we see the community coming out and showing solidarity with this one person who was the target of an attack. Sean Foyt thought that he could, he could bully Flamey Grant into silence, get them to go away, but the opposite happened. So uh, yeah, you love to see it. And uh, go support Flamey Grant if you don't already know about her. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay, 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 gay,